Thank you all for joining this talk. I will be talking about the observability uh, in polar dispersed systems and how they relate to small angle scattering. Um, the way this story came about was that, um, that some of us have been developing some analysis methods for small angle scattering, which allow us to fit a, a small angle scattering pattern to within the errors of the scattering pattern using a, a Monte Carlo method. This allows us to extract uh, uh, the sphere radius uh, or a polar dispersity um, and we can also get error bars on those. This story came about a while ago when uh, one of us showed a, um, a distribution like this. We had a population of a rather large size and a very small population which raised the interesting question of whether we can still see these particles. Because, as you are all uh, probably aware, the sphere intensity scales with the volume squared. And that means for spheres that this is the radius to the sixth power. This means that uh, the large spheres scatter much more than small, sp small spheres. And therefore might drown out any information that we have about the small, uh, small sized particles. Now, there was an additional uh, issue, which is that if we do the Monte Carlo fit, uh, it's these particles which dominate the scattering pattern, which means that in order to have any effect on the scattering pattern, I need to have a lot of spheres here, and these uh, steal my computational time. So, <coughs> this talk essentially answers two questions, which is, um, uh, can we fix the unequal weighting here, so that we don't lose so much computational time? on just the smaller spheres, and um, can we determine what is visible in these scattering patterns, uh, sorry, in these, uh, in these size distributions. So let me uh, give a bit of, little bit of background uh, uh, to this. So if we have a very nice uh, polydisperse uh, system, a system of polydisperse particles, and we want to know more about it, then what we do after electron microscopy is that we put it in a small angle scattering machine where we collect the, uh, the scattered x-rays, in this case x-rays, and of course collect a very nice uh, scattering pattern on absolute scale with error bars included. And we'd like to get some information from this, which is uh, information on shape, uh, polydispersity and packing of the spheres. However, um, in small angle scattering, it's not possible to separate these contributions. So instead, what, what you have is a shape polydispersity probability space. Um, so what you can do in order to, to be able to extract information is to assume a shape. And this will then collapse the probability space and, uh, to a single possible solution. So what we do is we assume uh, the shape of a sphere, which means that we have only a single polydispersity which will, uh, uh, which will then fit our scattering pattern. So bear in mind that the assumption is that we have uh, spheres in, our, uh, in the sample that we're measuring. And everything hinges on this. If you don't have spheres, then you know, think twice about what, what results you're trying to get out because it will still fit and it will still give you a solution. It will just not be what it is. It, it will just not, 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 not show what's actually in the sample. And of course our modeled scattering pattern consists of the integration of the scattering functions of individual spheres. So, in which in discrete systems is, is like the Monte Carlo method, is, is a summation uh, over these spheres. And as I said before, uh, the intensity of these sphere scattering patterns uh, scales with the radius to the sixth power. What we're trying to get out here is the, the polydispersity P of R um, uh, using this Monte Carlo method. So this means that um, if we uh, have a particular size distribution, um, just to emphasize this, that the intensity uh, scales with the radius to the sixth power which implies that very, very quickly we lose any, any information about uh, the smaller sizes that we have, the smaller sized particles. Um, however, uh, we have a slight advantage 
which is that the scattering pattern of these spheres shows maxima in different regions, which may partially compensate for this effect. So how much, do, how much is this effect and how much is it compensated for? In order to look at that, let's imagine that we have only two particles, one with a radius of gyration of 200 angstroms, the other one with a radius of gyration of 500 angstroms. In blue here, we have, we have the total scattering pattern. So we should imme immediately see two things, namely that, um, that the intensity of these particles, where one is almost twice the size as the other, um, that the uh, intensity scaling at zero angle is indeed massive. Uh, there's a huge gap, uh, several orders of magnitude, between the scattering function of the one sphere and the scattering function of the other sphere. What you should also see is that later on, there is a significant contribution of uh, the smaller sized uh, particle to the total scattering function. And this is what we're after. So, if we want to investigate this, uh, we can define uh, as a parameter, name, uh, can define observability as the uh, maximum fractional contribution of, uh, of the smaller sphere on the total scattering pattern. Um, and we can plot these for a lot of different spheres in a, in, in a polydisperse systems. We can plot this observability. And what we get is this. Um, what this shows you is on horizontal axis uh, the sphere radius and on the vertical axis the observability of, that, uh, of particles of that size in a system with all these spheres in it. The intensity scaling law, you would expect a radius to the sixth power to appear here. Um, we, we instead see a radius to the second power behavior uh, in the observability. So um, this means that, that, um, that the effect of the scattering pattern, the different scattering patterns, uh, compensates quite significantly uh, the effect of the volume scaling of the scattering patterns. What we furthermore see is that if we, uh, if we limit our, uh, our Q range to a maximum of 0 0.35 inverse angstroms, which is where normal small angle scattering patterns sort of peter out, um, is that we see a bend in this observability uh, at exactly pi over Q max, or at about thereabouts, uh, pi over Q max. Um, above this, we have this radius squared uh, behavior of the observability, and below this, we have the radius to the sixth power, as you would expect from the volume scaling, uh, the, from the volume scaling law. So this means that within your Q limits, um, observability scales with a radius squared, and we can use this to answer a variety of questions. So just to emphasize, these while the intensity scales with a radius to the sixth power, um, the observability. Uh, scales only with a radius square, which is still bad, but not as bad as to the sixth power. So now we can start answering some of the questions that we posed in the beginning, starting with, can we fix the unequal weighting in the Monte Carlo method? We sure can, because as you remember, the uh, the scattered intensity is um, is a summation over all of our uh, sphere scattering functions, uh, which are of course scaled with a radius to the sixth power, volume scaling, and what we're trying to get is this polydispersity uh, P of R. Um, so now that we know that the observability scales with a radius squared, uh, we can take a radius to the fourth power, uh, we can take it into our uh, size distribution to create a pseudo size distribution. So now what we're left with is uh, determining the pseudo size distribution, and um, our, our sphere intensity now scales with the radius squared, as opposed to the radius to the sixth power. And when we do Monte Carlo methods with this, it is properly quick. And this solution I can get in seconds, whereas previously it could take up to several minutes. Um, so since it takes, since it is so very quick, uh, to do. I can repeat this by about 200 times to get nice values for the means and the standard deviations. 
Um, of course, this is a pseudo size distribution. This is scaled with uh, r to the fourth power. So if we uh, remove that um, uh, that scaling uh, to get the normal number weighted size distribution back out, um, we can we we can we can get the proper size distribution with uh, with the error bars because we can just apply this to both the standard deviation as well as the means. And then, as for the second question, uh, can we determine what is visible in uh, particle size distribution? We certainly can, because this is the this was the idea initially behind the determination of the observability. If we plot the inverse observability, uh, this would be representative for the relative number of particles that we need uh, um, uh, that we need to see in equal contribution. So by setting uh, the biggest particle to have a relative contribution of 1. By scaling this line with our me measurement accuracy, which is hardly ever better than 1%, it is really difficult to get a better than that, uh, this new line then shows us the minimum number of particles required uh, in order for us to see any effect uh, on the scattering pattern. This means that uh, the area underneath this line uh, is invisible. Uh, they will not tell us anything. They don't have a significant contribution to the scattering pattern. Uh, so any solution over there is, um, it doesn't have any information. Yet. What you also might remember was that we had this kink at uh, pi over q max. So beyond this point of pi over q max, and uh, of course the observability then scales with the radius to the sixth power, so that means that this area is additionally uh, uh, not visible, doesn't contribute significantly to our, uh, to our scattering pattern. So that means that in these particle size distributions uh, that, we, uh, that we show, that we can very easily show a line which in indicates the minimum observable number of particles. I think it's very important to do this because this will tell you what exactly is a significant contribution to our scattering pattern. So to conclude this talk, um, we can define the observability as the maximum fractional contribution of a single uh, a particle scattering function to the total scattering function. Um, this will follow a radius squared relationship up until a pi over q max point, beyond which we will see a radius to the sixth power uh, behavior. And we can translate this uh, into number of particles, relative number of particles required uh, for us to see any effects of these particles on the scattering pattern. So that's it. If you'd like to learn more, uh, please take a look at my website. Um, and thank you very much for your attention. We'll fix the amicable weighting of our uh, 